So one of the biggest problems photographers have, and one of the things I get requested most when I'm teaching, is a simple setup for groups. Now, all photographers that I've ever taught, all whatever how many thousand, have all had the same consideration when it comes to groups. The problem with groups is lighting groups takes a lot of equipment. Usually in the studio, I'm using three or four or five lights. However, there is one benefit to shooting on location and it's a super simple way if you have an overcast day. So some of you might have seen um, last week I posted this picture of my friend Sephra Alexander. She's called the Seed Huntress. And she went on a project where they used this like outrigger boat down the Connecticut River. And she's working with local farms and kind of places where they plant seeds and also planting native wildlife in the banks of the Connecticut River. Now this is all to promote like, obviously, you know, it's called rewilding, bringing back original plant species that were there. And it also helps pollinators, bees, insects, etc., who are used to those local plants have kind of a restoration in the habitat. And if you know about me, I am all about elevating explorers and people who are doing work like this with my photography. So the way I do that is I'm gonna add lighting in my photographs to make kind of these hero images. And this is no exception. So the great thing about this shoot is I actually recorded the whole thing in a little behind the scenes camera. So I'm able to kind of now make this video and talk a little bit about how I lit it. And the reason I wanted to use this exact image is because I only used one light to light this. The reason is, we were like camping overnight on the Connecticut River and you'd think, oh, it's Connecticut, it's gonna have people and infrastructure everywhere. But this campsite where we were and where we did the shoot from on the river didn't actually have vehicle access. You could park kind of like up this steep hill very far away. So we weren't able to bring in a bunch of equipment. So I had my assistant Magnus and we um, brought, and I'll show you here if I can show this yeah, I'll just show you the video right away here. We actually brought just one light with one a battery pack and one modifier. That's it. That's all we used for this. So here I brought these uh, botanists or botanists as uh, they were very cleverly called for this expedition. And I kind of dragged everyone out of the tent. You can just imagine me going around like, okay, guys, it's time for your photo shoot at the you know crack of 6 a.m. or whatever. And I had uh, scouted the location the night before, but when we woke up, we were blessed with this beautiful, beautiful fog that you just can't recreate. And if you watch this little video here, it's a, like a sped up version. Um, you have like beautiful light leaking through, etc. So first thing I did is I kind of went to the location and I had a look like what's the, um, you know, what's the light and it was all coming from my left, so the subject's right. So where Magnus is standing here in the water on this side. Sorry, this is reversed. Um, so I'm gonna, when I photograph groups, I'm just gonna accentuate that. So because I've already got this beautiful, beautiful layer of natural light, just soft light as the sun starts coming up and like we don't have hard sun, we have clouds, we have fog. It's beautiful, light's just being scattered everywhere. All I want is if you imagine you have really flat light, light, like it's filling in just a little bit everywhere, I just wanna add a little bit of direction. So I wanna like have a look at this image again. There we go, I'll move myself here out of the way. And you can see we've got all our shadows really nicely filled in and then we're just adding a little pop of light just to make the faces have a little bit of shape so they don't look so flat and like they've just woken up. You know, I still like the, having the kind of gritty feeling of everyone's just stepped out of the tent on an expedition, which they had, so we went with that. So that's kind of the very, very simple idea behind this. It really isn't more complicated than this. I use this method also in Mongolia. If you go to my website, www.felixkunz.com, go to projects, you can see my Mongolia project. There's a group photo that I took there. Again, I just had one light and I added it in What's amazing about this is it's a little bit hard to tell, but if you really eagle-eyed here, you can see Sephra, who is um, in the middle on the boat here getting uh, posed, is 
much further away from the camera actually than Magnus is, so my assistant on the left here. And he's holding the light, not pointed at Sephira, but pointed about five feet ahead. And all I did when I was shooting this is I asked each member of like each subject, can you see the front of the modifier? Because if they can see the front of the light, some of that light is gonna hit them. That's as simple as it is. So even though the light is closest to Sephira, because it is not directly pointing at her, it's feathered, that's what I call it, it's, she's getting some of it, but everyone else is getting a little bit of that highlight too. So I'll pull up the image again before the end of this uh, video plays through. But, you know, now I'm just kind of, you know, we'd been on the river with this crew the, the, like the whole day before. And if you go to my website, you can see um, the whole project that I did. And like the pictures we took, we had like fun. We were swimming in the river the day before. So I already had like my checklist, you know, of having rapport with the subject, knowing kind of what the subject matter is going to be, knowing what they're going to wear, how they're going to look. And even once we got to the campsite, I figured out my location. So I had all of those points already in. And that rapport really helped <laughs> when I had to get them all out of bed in, uh, you know, at 6 a.m. So, you know, I'm going around and taking, so the lighting is kind of set. Like I just wanted to have a little bit light and it is so deadly simple. It's actually kind of, I wish I could shoot like this every day. The only thing is I need like ambient light not to be harsh for this to work. So I was very lucky on this morning. So here you can see kind of we're getting into the posing for the final image, that uh, final setup that I did with Sephra. And all the while I'm just taking test shots, but you can see I'm directing the people and each little person, just talking to them a little bit, getting them comfortable, getting them into the right pose, positioning everyone, and then trying out different things. Earlier in the video, you'll have seen me adjust, you know, clip someone's shirt back so it looks all nice and tight. And then I'll just do a bunch of shots. And then as soon as I shot this, because I knew I could just feel, like compare where we're at in the video to the final image, like I just knew as soon as I shot it, like this is the one. And we'd done a bunch of shooting earlier. You'll have seen that as, you know, as I was playing this video in the background. And then I just kind of like worked until I could feel the image. But let's have a look at the light. So imagine right now, remember what this looks like. I'm gonna bring up the finished image again. And you can just see there's a little bit of light on Sephira, the subject right in the front. Then look at the subject on the very left, Jesse. He's also got that directionality of light. So does um, all the other three subjects here, just a touch, just to make it feel like halfway between that natural light look and a little bit of accentuation, just so I'm bringing a little bit of something, a little bit of value that I'm adding to the shoot. So I'm not just going along documenting, I'm actually creating a scene, you know, and elevating that. And then all that was needed to be done after that is a little bit of color work. You know, I think we got the retouch it maybe to composite a little bit. Here I am like, saying like embrace <laughs> the power of like rewilding the Connecticut River. Um, and we just kind of try to have fun with the whole shoot. So this, yes, it's a behind the scenes video and I'm gonna keep it as simple as that. If you wanna know more about kind of how I do this, you know, I go into great detail, including finding like ways to give you a real understanding without the jargon, without the technical uh, like ratios or math or whatever, how this light came to me in terms of how do we add just a little bit of uh, directionality on these subjects in a really simple way on an overcast day. So that's the, the, one of the hard things I have about teaching is sometimes it's so so, so simple that people almost don't believe, like, hang on, you just put a light and instead of pointing it directly at the subject, you just feathered it off a bit. And I feel like anyone watching this can just go straight into recreating this, but just by taking a screenshot of that behind the scenes still. But if you wanna know more about how I do this, I do have a class specifically for lighting on location. It's called um, the lighting series, sorry, the location lighting series. And I'll show you here, sorry, it was the wrong link. It's at thelocationseries.com. And on the Location Series website, it'll tell you all about it. You can read other people's reviews. I'll put the link here again, locatingseries.com. 
And if you're interested specifically in group lighting, then I'll put that up here. Go to this group lighting video where I explain this in detail. The location series is for anyone that's shooting anything outside the studio. It's not just outdoors, but it's also if you're like shooting at someone's house and you're using the ambient light that's there, the light that already exists, to add to your existing scene and using artificial light to kind of accentuate that. So in the location lighting series, I show all of that. And that's at thelocationseries.com. So that's my quick little um, behind the scenes video. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, a kind of an explainer. You know, the, light, the location series is gonna give you much more in depth. If you like this kind of thing, right now, I might open this video up. So if you see it on my channel randomly, I've opened it up right now. It's for those who only have the link. And if you do like it, go ahead and like the video and you can subscribe if you like. But I would love to hear your comments below in the section because we can have a conversation. You can ask questions. You don't have to have um, purchased the location lighting series for me. I'm happy uh, to have answered your questions. I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments at any time. And I'd love to know if you try something like this. Remember, just find open shade or an overcast day, add the light from the direction it is primarily coming from already, and you'll just get that beautiful little pop of color. And then it's just a point of playing with it until you get a good balance, which you can just do by looking at the images when you're shooting. All right. Thanks, everyone.